what does a typical day look like in the life of a behavioral scientist, or at least this behavioral scientist? Uh, so Irrational Labs has three kind of core branches of the type of work that we do. The first and probably the largest is consulting, second is training, and third is research. So let's go through those in order, uh, starting with consulting. That uh, most often is working with a client who has a problem to solve, right? Classic. Uh, a behavioral problem, why are people not doing X? You know, so you can think about retention uh, often or kind of drop off at a particular moment of the user flow or in the health space, it's not doing this one health behavior that we really want them to do that is to their benefit, to their long-term health interests to do, but they're not doing. How do we, how do we apply behavioral science insights and methodologies to those problems? And so that's the core of the work we do. Often that takes the shape of a behavioral diagnosis where you're looking very in depth, uh, screen by screen, word by word uh, at a user flow. A lot of times, again, we're, we work very frequently with tech. So this could be an app and you're looking in depth at the app design and what is it nudging? What is it encouraging the user to do? And how can we think about that differently to help uh, solve the problem at hand? So you're overlaying behavioral psychologies on top of that, and you're coming up with recommended solutions, recommended changes. So this could be copy changes. This could be de design changes. This could be larger kind of bigger feature changes um, as well. So that's one shape, behavioral diagnosis. It often can take other shapes as well. Sometimes we're doing a literature review. Sometimes we're doing um, general advisory sessions, but most commonly I would say we spend a lot of time on behavioral diagnoses. The next category let's talk about is training. So we have multiple ways we do this as well. So we have a boot camp program. We have a couple versions of that. One is where there is a, you're doing it together with a cohort and you're attending live lectures. So I will go on and lecture about you know, our 3B model. And we'll, we'll go over specific psychologies together. And it, it's a live lecture. And Irrational Labs very much has a model of learn by doing. So you're actively participating, you're solving. If you as an attendee, as a boot camper, are, are you know, thinking about your product, you're giving feed, you're showing your screen, you're sharing. Uh, you, we have access to a Slack channel. We have office hours where you can share the work that you're doing and you get live feedback from behavioral scientists, from the team like myself. And then on top of that, in terms of training, we also do custom workshop for companies. So that means that uh, a particular company is saying, help, help our team learn, give us a, a quick and dirty of behavioral science methodologies. And so we will adapt custom content for the problem at hand. And again, this very much of a model of learn by doing. So folks get to Behavioral science is very fun, of course, I'm, I'm biased, but I, I think that that's, I can, I can say that with confidence, people like it. That being said, we focus on saying, how do we, out of a workshop, uh, create it in such a way that the attendees walk out with concrete kind of actionable things that they can do uh, immediately afterwards uh, in, in terms of changing it and improving their product. So that's probably the second uh, area that I spend a fair amount of time in. And then the third bucket that Irrational Labs has is research. Um, and sometimes uh, this combines with the consulting. So let me give an example of that. Recently, we worked with TikTok on this very tough problem of the spread of misinformation. What can we do to, I, I don't even wanna say solve, right? You can't solve this, but how can we mitigate it? How can we reduce it? And so we did an RCT together with them in product uh, where they had multiple conditions. Uh, this is all behaviorally informed insights, of course, to, to design the intervention. Uh, we also did pre-testing actually on MTurk before this. But the point here is that sometimes it combines between the consulting side where we're solving this problem they're interested in and using research to then bolster and validate, right? In our case, the the condition that we launched reduced the spread, the, the click of the share button of potential misinformation by 24%. So that further bolsters kind of the consulting work, the findings, the recommendations we make if we can prove it against a control. 